Hello, it's been quite some time, but I am back again with a new devlog for my indie game Sandfire. Today I will show how I built the complete UI, the inventory, how I improved the strafe movement, added some dynamic water and a skill tree. In the last devlog I presented to you the new magic combat system and with it I introduced the hut and the inventory. Because it missed a lot of polish, I decided to make a dedicated hut for the progress bars with quick slots, which now look like this. It's super heavily inspired by this artwork which I found on ArtStation and I think the result looks very nice. The previous inventory which I made for the magic spells had a selector which was controlled via grid based movement. However, I found it not intuitive enough since there was no feedback whether a spell is equipped or not. And moreover, it was not possible to change the position of the individual items in the inventory itself. Therefore, I decided to turn back to the older version of my inventory. And there, I added at first three new equip slots, but changed it later to only two equip slots. And I also optimized it for the use with a PS4 controller. You can take a look at the old project file on GitHub, follow, and I will link it down below in the description. So with the current inventory, the player can pick up various items and depending on the item, a little message shows up with the item symbol. For the complete UI design, I wanted it to be similar to the one in Blasphemous, since I really liked its simplicity. In my case, I wanted the UI to be easy understandable and interactive, but this was harder than I imagined because I don't want to use any languages for my game and had to come up with new ideas. After a bit of research, I discovered the term UX. So UI for instance regards the appeal and overall look of something. UX on the other hand means user experience and determines the function of for instance inventory, so that the player can associate certain items with certain attributes. This helped me a lot for an inventory without language, since I try to use the symbols and also common functions that the player already knows. So for instance the gear symbol which the player associates with settings or I use a key symbol for the quest items which is also um, common as well. Of course my choice of symbols are not perfect but I think this could work and for the rest of the UI I try to keep a consistent color palette and symbol design. The preview of the different items like the actual spell appearing in the inventory or the different weapons should support the structure in order to make things easier to understand. I originally wanted to make the entire UI based on pixel art sprites which you can see in the very early state of Sandfire. The reason for this was my inexperience in creating 2D sprites, especially drawing high res textures. Due to this I limited myself to a more simplistic style which should still look somehow appealing. For the icons I draw simple shapes like rectangles in GIMP and make use of the different brushes to give it an intentional hand drawn look. I also keep the colors for the simples in just one color since I am simply not capable to draw colorful icons. For the more complex 2D sprites like for instance the character I help myself with my 3D knowledge. So I make a 3D render in Blender from my 3D mesh and I use this picture and edit it in GIMP to attain the current style. That's how I created the character sprites and also the little weapon icons. With all important icons drawn, I had created a big inventory layout containing only the inventory for the magic scrolls at the moment. Since I planned to split the different items to different inventory containers like in Blasphemous, so that the weapons are shown in the weapon inventory and the spells in the spell inventory and so on. I added categories to my JSON file where I stored the different information for the different items. I created for each now empty scene an individual inventory based on what I already created so far. So for the weapon inventory I added a very similar build to the magic inventory. You can equip weapons and get also a preview of your equipped weapon by using a little preview shader. 
for the spells and weapon in general, it was very important to me that you can swap them quickly in the HUD. So for this I use a custom signal which I connect to the HUD and change the active equip slot. Since I also connect the signal to the inventory, it enables the fast switching between two different items without um, having to open the inventory beforehand. But in order to equip items, the player needs to pick them up first. Therefore, I place various items in the test scene, which I am currently using. And I already created the pickup function before. So whenever the player collects an item, I add it to its correct dictionary and show it in the inventory. The last thing I wanted to add to the inventory was the skill tree. For the skill tree itself, I followed a tutorial by JVDev and connected the individual panels with the Line2D node procedurally. The current layout is of course the same as in Blasphemous, however the skill tree doesn't do anything at the moment except you can enable and disable the different icons, but at the current moment I am not sure what kind of skills I want to add, but time will show. I also started an attempt by creating interactive water. I made a post on Reddit at the beginning of June and it had a very good reception. My main inspiration for the shader were these two videos from the Unreal Engine 4 which were created by Toyo Jiro and Hans Lorso. For this I use off-screen rendering and projection mapping in order to achieve this wave effect. Since I currently have fluid dynamics at university, I tried to use the one dimensional wave equation and also um, the Taylor series to calculate in finite timestamps the next value of the function. The problem was that I had no idea how to project this on a texture and also to update this texture to be able to calculate the next timestamp for the wave. But luckily I discovered that Captain Proton did something similar for GLES2 which really really helped me a lot and I'm sure that without this I wouldn't be able to have finished the water. But of course other problems appeared during the process as well, which I thought were pretty funny. The current state of the water is super heavy on performance and therefore it's currently only option for Godot 4. Since my current graphics card, an RX 5700, has a hard time to keep the performance at 60 FPS. I also refactored the strafe movement. What you can see now was a very early state of the strafe movement in the demo, which caused a lot of problems. And since I'm now using a proper player character, I decided to remake the strafing. For this, the player performs the wanted animation in the plane space 2D, and I translate the camera a bit while moving by using lerp. I also fixed the issue with the rotation of the character and when he is not on the same level as the opponent. And I also fixed many other bugs that have been in the demo version. I also set up a dummy character for the player to lock on that has a health bar. Since I noticed connecting issues from the Area 3D node when moving very fast, I decided to spawn individual collision shapes to fix this since it's I think a common technique in the industry. That is all for this devlog. I'm sorry that there is not as much new to show compared to the last devlogs since way more happened in the back end compared to the visuals. This was also the first aspect of my game which was not that fun to make but I kept going and I'm happy that I finished the inventory and the UI stuff. For the next weeks I'm going to start to work on the enemy again because the current one is in need of much improvement and I also want to add um, some other enemies to the game as well. So thank you very much for watching and as always take care and goodbye.